James Bond stood at the open window of the seventh floor office of the tall building in Regent's Park, the headquarters of the Secret Service. It was dawn. <coughs> duty officer? Morning, James. M wants to see you before you go off duty. Why the hell's he in so early? It's not even breakfast time. Bond picked up the night log and took the lift to the eighth floor. You wanted to see me, sir? Good morning, 007. Come in. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Quiet night? Hmm, pretty quiet, sir. Station H called about... Never mind, never mind. I'll read all about it in the log. Now, things change. I'm taking you off night duty for the present. Oh. I was just getting into it. Something's come up. Know anything about gold, 007? I know it when I see it, sir. Goldfinger by Ian Fleming, starring Ian McKellen as Goldfinger and Toby Stevens as James Bond, with John Standing as M, Lisa Dillon, Hector Elizondo, Henry Goodman, Tom Hollander, Alistair McGowan, Ian Ogilvie, Lloyd Owen, Tim Piggott-Smith and Rosamund Pike. Martin Jarvis as Ian Fleming tells the story of Goldfinger. Well, you've got an appointment at the Bank of England, four o'clock this afternoon. man called Colonel Smithers... <laughs> Enough time to get some sleep? Yes, sir. <clears throat> He's head of the bank's research department. Well, nothing more or less than a spy system, seems to me. Anyway, this Smithers keeps an eye out for any monkeying about with our bullion reserves and whatnot. Got a bee in his bonnet about some big gold leak. <laughs> Ever wondered who are the richest men in England, 007? No, sir. Have a guess. Uh, well, there's Sassoon. The Rothschilds. Some of the Dukes may still have a lot of money. Not uh, bad, not bad, but you've missed out the Joker in the pack. Man I'd never thought of until they brought up his name. Richest of the lot. Called Goldfinger. Or it Goldfinger. <laughs> well, what's there to laugh about? I'm sorry, sir. What's the matter, 007? <laughs> Stop behaving like a bloody schoolboy. Well, sir, a week ago I was at the airport in Miami after coming in from Mexico... A flight was supposed to be taking me on that same evening to New York. If you want to know, I was feeling a bit depressed about that kill or be killed business in Mexico City. I'd already got two double bourbons inside me. Transamerica regrets to announce a delay on flight TR-618 from Miami to New York due to a mechanical defect. Damn it. The new departure time will be at 8 a.m. Will all passengers please report to the Transamerica desk, where arrangements for their overnight accommodation will be made. Thank you. Oh, God. Hmm, not a bad idea, actually. Spend the night in Miami, get stinking drunk, blot it out. Seen too much death. Pardon me, uh, sure, it's Mr. Bond. Mr. James Bond. It could be. Well, my name is DuPont, Julius hmm? DuPont. I guess you won't remember, but we've met before. Oh, really? In France, 1951, Royal Les that casino. Ethel and me were next to you at the table. That night you had that big game with the Frenchman. <laughs> when you broke that guy, Le Chiffre. Yes, of course. Baccarat. Quite a night. I wasn't thinking of much except my cards. Oh, why? Well, gosh, Mr. Bone, I understand. <clears throat> now, I knew it was you. As soon as I saw you sitting there, delayed like me. Mm. Now, I hope you'll forgive me. Mr. Bone, but after that game at Royale, I did hear you're sort of a um, private investigator. I used to dabble in that kind of thing. And now you've settled down? Well... well... What did you choose, if you'll pardon the question? Import and export. I'm with Universal. Come across them? Universal? What? Yeah, why, yeah, sure, sure. I got quite a heap of interests all over. No, not chemicals. I'm not one of the chemical DuPonts. Is that so? Now, see here, Mr. Bone, I got me a problem I greatly appreciate your guidance. If you were counting on stopping over in Miami tonight, would you please allow me to be your host? It so happens I own a piece of the Floridiana Hotel. What do you say? Now, my chauffeur will drive us. You'd be doing me a real favor. Okay, I'll come straight to the point, Mr. Bond. You ever play canasta? Yeah, sometimes I like it. Two-handed canasta? I have done. Not so much fun. Tends to even out. You're so right. Law of averages. You pass the time, no one gets hurt. Right. So what would you say, Mr. Bond, if I told you I'd lost $25,000 in a week playing two-handed canasta? <laughs> and mark you, I'm a good card player. Member of the Regency Club. If you've been playing with the same man all the time, you've been cheated. Exactly. 
this bastard's cheating me, and by golly, I'm gonna find out how he does it, and have him hounded out of Miami. He won again this morning, and again this afternoon. Finally, I got so mad, I didn't show it, mind you. I paid up politely, but without telling this guy, I just left the hotel and got me to the airport. You ran away? Well, I could seek into 50 grand or 100. You must have won sometimes. Oh, sure. But somehow, just as I'd got the SOB all set for killing, he'd lay down as many of his cards as he could meld. Darn it, he seemed to be psychic. Any mirrors in the room? Heck no. We always play outdoors. Roof garden by the pool says he wants to get himself a sunburn. Hmm? He certainly did that. Red as a lobster. Here's the Floridiana. Who is this man? What's his name? Goldfinger. Auric Goldfinger. Come on, Miss Bump. I'm gonna buy you a pint of pink champagne. <sighs> Pomerie, 1958, silver tankard. Done? All right. Done. Auric. That means golden, doesn't it? Sure does. He certainly is that, Mr. Bond. Flaming red hair. He's a weird guy. Kind of big. Nationality? Says he's British. Doesn't sound like it. Domiciled in Nassau. Profession? Broker. Whatever that means. What's he worth? Oh, he's loaded. I got my bank to check. He's lousy with it. Seems he keeps his money in gold bars. Shifts him around the world. Acts like a damn federal bank. If he's as rich as you say. I know. It's crazy. Why? Look, Mr. Bond, I will pay you $10,000 to stay here as my guest until you have discovered how this man Goldfinger beats me at cards. Huh. Uh, I have to be in New York to catch my plane to London within 48 hours, but if you play your usual sessions tomorrow, I should have plenty of time to find out the answer. God bless you, Mr. James Bond. Hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm going to put you in the presidential suite. He's not expected to... <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, Mr. Goldfinger. He's deaf, Mr. Bone. You see the hearing aid? What the hell's he wearing around his neck? Well, that's a gadget to help your tan, polished tin. Reflects the sun up under your chin and behind the ears. Mr. Goldfinger? Hmm? Oh, why? Hello there, DuPont. <laughs> good morning to you. I'd like you to meet uh, Mr. James Bond. Uh -huh. He's a friend of mine from New York, a countryman of yours. Uh -huh. Come down to try and talk me into a bit of business. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Bond. Mr. Goldfinger. So, no game today, DuPont. Hey, what do you mean, no game? Kind of get me my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Sam to fix the table. James here says he'd like to learn. I'll get some clothes on, Mr. DuPont. I had intended to have a golf lesson this afternoon, but cards have priority. You play golf, Mr. Baum? Uh, occasionally, when I'm in England. I have recently joined the Royal St. Mark's in Kent. Sandwich is close to one of my business interests. You know it? I have played that. Well, we must have a game one day. DuPont, I will join you shortly. Well, you sit there, James. <laughs> now, no peeping. <laughs> All set, Goldfinger? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll cut the cards. Oh, your deal. Somehow Bond had expected it, but this was no card shop. Goldfinger dealt quickly and efficiently, but with no hint of a grip that means you are armed for dealing bottoms or seconds. So this is how Canasta goes, James. Deal 15 cards. You draw two, discard one. Otherwise, straight regency rules, okay. Well, let's go. By golly, I nearly screwed you that time, Goldfinger. What in hell told you to cut and run? I smelled trouble. <laughs> Will you be staying long, Mr. Bomb? It's Bond, B I N D. No, I have to go back to New York tonight. How sad. Well, let us continue. Oh, no, that's $1,500 to you, Goldfinger. Well, there it goes again. Don't you cut for seats? I often find that a change of position helps the luck. Unfortunately, Mr. Bond, that is not possible or I could not play. I suffer from agoraphobia, huh? the fear of open spaces. I cannot bear the open horizon. I'm sorry. How did that come about? I have no idea. Well, I think I'll stretch my legs for a bit. Bond strolled down to the far end of the pool. 
He turned and looked back towards the two players beneath the cliff of the hotel. So, you like to face the hotel, do you? Or is it that you like Mr. Dupont to have his back to it? Bond looked up. His suite was on the top floor, number 1200. Goldfinger's suite, he knew, was 200. Ten floors directly below his, on the second floor. Ah, oh, yes. Very clever. I'll see you this afternoon, Mr. Goldfinger. He's drawn five and four. Completed canastra and fives with two twos, discarding four. Has singletons in kings, knaves, nine sevens. Oh, so boring. Boring? I don't think so. What? Nice pose. Thank you. Who are you? What do you want? I've got what I want. Perfect photo. Hello. My name's Bond. James Bond. How did you get in here? A friend lent me a passkey. Neat little machine. What are you transmitting on? He told me, but I can't remember. 170-somethings? Mega cycles. Move over. Hand me your binoculars. <clears throat> Doesn't he mind not getting the signals? It's happened before when a plug pulled or something. He just waits for me to come through again. Well, let him stew for a bit. Anyway, it's time you did the nails on your right hand. You gave me a shock. Why does he do it? He's crawling with money. I know. It's a sort of mania with him. All he says is, when the odds aren't right, make them right. Lucky for him I'm not Pinkerton's or the Miami Police Department. Oh, he can buy anyone off. No one can resist gold. What do you mean? He always carries a million dollars worth of gold about with him. Oh, yes? He loves gold. Really loves it like people love jewels or women. You're very beautiful. Does he love you? Certainly not. Though I think he likes people to think that we... <laughs> So you're a kind of secretary. Companion. You won't tell him, will you? I, I don't know what would happen. Why do you do it? A hundred pounds a week. And look. Hmm. Nice ring. Gold hands around a golden heart. Twenty-four carat. When I've saved enough, I shall go. <laughs> look, I don't think I'm very properly dressed. Can't I go and put something on over these? No. It's time to light a fire under Mr. Goldfinger. Let's see. <clears throat> Dupont seems to be a new man. Goldfinger is very worried about his hearing aid. All set? Can't you leave him alone? I like you, I... Sorry. <clears throat> Here goes. Now hear me, Goldfinger. This is James Bond. Remember me? The game's finished. I have photographs of the whole setup. Blonde, binoculars, microphone, you and your hearing aid. Nod your head if you understand me. Good. Put your card's face up on the table. Now, take out your checkbook and write a check to cash for $50,000. Made up as follows. 35 you have taken from Mr. Dupont. 10 for my fee. The extra 5 for wasting so much of Mr. Dupont's valuable time. Okay, now jot this down. Book me a compartment on the Silver Meteor to New York tonight plus a bottle of vintage champagne on ice and plenty of caviar. Nod. Right. Now, hand the check across to Mr. Dupont and say, I apologize humbly. I have been cheating you. Then you can go. Oh, just a moment, Goldfinger. What's your name? Jill Masterton. One last thing. I shall be taking a hostage for the ride to New York. Miss Masterton. See that she's at the train. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Goldfinger. Champagne? Or have you had enough? More champagne. <sighs> 007, I despair of you sometimes. This womanizing. Well, we'll let it pass. What happened to the $10,000? Gave it to the girl, sir. Why not to the White Cross Fund? For the families of Secret Service men and women killed on duty. Sorry, sir. Hmm. Coincidence about Goldfinger? Seen him once or twice at Blades, plays bridge there when he's in England. Right, here's our question. Is Goldfinger the foreign banker for the Russians? The treasurer, so to speak, of Smirsch, the Soviet organisation of... Vengeance and death. Yes, I do know, sir. Well, he's the chap the Bank of England's after. And as from this moment, 007, so are you. 
The trouble is, Commander Bond, gold attracts the most ingenious criminals. Gold is the talisman of fear. Fear, Colonel Smithers? Yes. Fear takes gold out of circulation and hoards it against the evil day. Untraceable. Correct. Supposing you've got a small bar of gold in your pocket weighing about five pounds, and that'll be 24 carat, what we call a thousand fine. Oh. Now, the law says that you've got to sell that to the Bank of England at the controlled price of 12 pounds, 10 shillings an ounce, round a thousand pounds. But you've got a friend going to India. So you cut your bar into thin sheets, smaller than playing cards, and sew them into a cotton belt. Your friend flies off to Bombay and he goes to the first bullion dealer in the bazaar. He'll be given £1,700 for your £5 bar, and you are a richer man than you might have been. So, what's your particular problem? Right. There's a man who came over to England in 1937, a refugee from Riga, name of Auric Goldfinger. Now, soon after he'd been naturalised, he started buying up small pawnbrokers all over the country. That's perfectly respectable. He toured his shops once a month, collected all the old gold. After the war, he invested in a well-found Brixham trawler and an old silver ghost Rolls-Royce. It was an armoured car, actually. He set up a little factory called Thanet Alloy Research in the grounds of his house in Kent, and he staffed it with half a dozen Korean stevedores he picked up in Liverpool. In the summer of 1954, his trawler, homeward bound from India, went ashore on the Goodwins. The salvage company found traces in the hold of some sort of brown powder. Gold? Yes. The, the old fox had been precipitating his gold into this powder and shipping it to India as fertilizer. And the gold squad couldn't pin it on him. <laughs> Mr. Goldfinger has 20 million pounds worth of gold bars on safe deposit. I flew to Nassau and had a look at the 5 million pounds worth he holds there in the vaults of the Royal Bank of Canada. Most of that gold belongs to England. Our currency is backed by gold. It's the foundation of our international credit. The strength of the pound is based on our stocks of gold. You know about the currency crisis and the high bank rate? Of course. Right. Well, this country needs that gold badly. We are asking you to bring Mr. Goldfinger to book, Commander Bond, and get it back. And the quicker, the better. Good morning, Alfred. Why, if it isn't Mr. James? <laughs> what brings you down here, sir? We heard you were in the diplomatic or something. Something like that. It's good to be back, Alfred. Twenty years since I played my last round here. A bit of practice, Mr James, and you'd have been scratch. It was all there. Any chance of a game? Oh, I doubt it, sir. Not many members in the middle of the week this time of year. Well, what about you? I'm booked, sir. With a member. Ah, oh, never mind. Who are you playing with? A Mr Goldfinger, sir. Oh, any good? <sighs> Hard to say. Come on, Alfred. What's the matter with him? Well, the truth is, some members think Mr Goldfinger is just a little bit hot. Meaning? Well, you know, sir, he improves his lie and so forth. <laughs> but that's only gossip. I've never seen anything. Brings his own caddy, Korean fellow who wears a bowler hat. I suppose you wouldn't care to take Mr Goldfinger on. Uh, possibly. I've got a caddy for you. Remember Hawker? He'll be another that's glad to see you down here again. Ah, oh, here's Mr Goldfinger's car now, sir. Have a word with him, Alfred. I'll be through there. I think we've met before, Mr Bond. My God, it's Goldfinger. Where have you sprung from? I told you I played down here. The professional suggests that I play with you this morning. Oh? Well, I don't mind. But I warn you, I like playing for money. Suits me. Off handicap, of course. What is yours? Nine. Coincidence. I also am nine. Mm. So, it's a level game. You'll be too good for me. I doubt it. However, I like a gamble. That bit of money you removed from me in Miami, your figure was $10,000. Double or quits? OK. 10000 it is. Good afternoon, Mr Bond, sir. Walker. Good to see you again. What have you been keeping? Played any golf recently? Well, Mr uh, Bond, this is my caddy, odd job. Stop. Odd job? Yes, he's my handyman and chauffeur. I call him odd job because that describes his functions on my staff. Oh. Come along. So, how's the agoraphobia, Goldfinger? Doesn't all this wide open space bother it? Not at all. Our job, unpeel me and you ball. So, Dunlop, 65, number one. Always use the same ball. And what is yours? Penfold, with hearts on them. Good. Strict rules of golf, Mr. Bond? Naturally. <coughs> all square so far. Now concentrate, James. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Bond. <sighs> the head cold. 
Well, don't do it again. You made me hook my shot. Bad luck, sir. And now me. What is the firm you work for? Universal Export. Mm -hmm. And where do they hang out? Regent's Park. What do they export? Oh, everything from sewing machines to tanks. What's your speciality? Small arms, selling ironmongery to sheikhs and rajas. Mm, interesting work. Uh, I'm looking for something new. Rather like the idea of Canada. Don't give me ideas, Mr. Bond. Give me a new ball, Hawker. You saw what he did in the bunker on a second, sir? No, I was too far away. Well, uh... They can't see us at the moment. This is what he did. His ball was half buried in the sand, like that, sir. Then he stood just behind the buried ball. Hmm. Remember, he sort of jumped up to look at the line to the hole, sir? Mm -hmm. Like so. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, see the heavy impact of my feet? <clears throat> it squeezed the ball out. Yeah, and perfectly teed for an easy cut-up shot, which you'd have thought was utterly uh, impossible. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Hawker. Yeah, yeah. You were lucky there, Mr. Bond. That putt ought to have run off the green. Always give the hole a chance. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what happened to that nice Miss Masterton? She left my employ. Must get in touch with her. Where did she go to? I couldn't say. <clears throat> nice one, sir. Right down the centre. <laughs> Mr. Goldfinger's ball is way over there. Jungle country. You'll be lucky to find it, Mr. Goldfinger, sir. Well, maybe it's over here. This way. Come on, our job. Find it. Yes, sir. There wasn't anything like the line, surely, Hawker. Hey, what's this? Hell and damnation. It's a Dunlop 65. Goldfinger, it's here. Oh, no, sorry. You play with a number one, don't you? Mm, yes. Well, this is a number seven. See? Hmm? Not mine. Well, another half a minute, I'll have to claim the hole. Straight rules of golf, you stipulated. Wait. Here, Mr. Goldfinger. He's here. Nam one down low. Really? Let's have a look. Yes, almost new Dunlop one. In an astonishingly good lie. Must have had the hell of a lucky kick. So it would seem. I think we can get a spoon to that one, our job. Miracle him finding that ball. It wasn't his ball, sir. What do you mean? Odd job must have dropped that ball down his trouser leg. How can you be sure? Because his ball was lying under my bag of clubs, sir. Sorry, but uh, he's fixed you again. Right. I know what to do. Hawker, take this. It's the ball I picked up in the rough. Be certain you take the flag. When you pick up the balls from the green, whichever way the hole has gone, give Goldfinger this one, OK? Bray doesn't scrutinize it. Got it, sir. Will you take the passer for this one? Mm. Mr. Bond, sir. Your ball, and here's yours, Mr. Goldfinger. All square, gentlemen, and uh, one to go. Oh. Splendid drive, Goldfinger. But I've got you now, you bastard. Already hoist with your own nine iron. Now to roast you exquisitely. Beautiful putt, Goldfinger. Just six inches past the pin. Now, unless I can sink this 20-footer, the match is yours. Flag out, please, Hawker. I'm going to sink it. Oh, missed it, by God. Well, Mr. Bond, thanks for the game. I was just too good for you after all. Mm, you're a good nine handicap. Yeah, but hang on. Goldfinger... You play with a number one Dunlop, don't you? Yes, of course. What's the matter? Well, <laughs> I'm afraid you've been playing with the wrong ball. Here's my Penfold Hearts, and this is a number seven Dunlop. Look. Well, I'd give them to me. But... <sighs> Too bad. We were playing to the rules. Afraid that means you lose the hole and, of course, the match. Well, uh, it was a Dunlop seven you found in the rough. It was your caddy that gave me the ball. He gave me the wrong ball on purpose. A damn cheat. Yes, yeah, steady. You'll get a slander action on your hands if you're not careful. Hawker, did you give Mr. Goldfinger the wrong ball by mistake or anything? Oh, no, sir. 
If you want my opinion, the mistake may have been made at the 17th when the gentleman found his ball pretty far off the line we'd all marked it on. Mm. A, a seven looks very much like a one. I'd say that's what happens. Tommy Rod! Bond, you sure that was a number one my caddy found? I didn't really look closely, I'm afraid. However, it's the job of the player to make certain he's using the right ball, isn't it? I can't see that anyone else can be blamed. Well, many thanks for the match. Why does your caddy wear a bowler hat? Odd job. The hat. Show him. <clears throat> you see the branch of that tree, Mr. Bond? Watch. <laughs> Light but very strong alloy. That blow would have smashed a man's skull or half severed his neck. A most ingeniously concealed weapon, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, useful chap to have around. Indeed. And now, Mr. Bond, I insist you join me for luncheon at my house. The demonstration was an elementary one, Mr. Bond. Have you heard of karate? Hmm? Our job is one of the three in the world who have achieved the black belt in karate. Hmm. If our job were to use the appropriate single blow on any one of seven spots on your body, you would be dead. More chicken? Fascinating. I only know five ways of killing our job with one blow. Oh. Mm. Every day of his life, Mr. Bond, our job spends one hour hitting sacks of unpolished rice. <clears throat> when does he practice tossing the bowler hat? Our job keeps his eye in at all his skills. Sometimes there are accidents, but money is an effective winding sheet. Oh, very good. You like the aphorism? You have a beautiful car. Old Silver Ghost, isn't it? Correct, but I have fitted disc brakes to increase the braking power. Why's that? The body can't be all that heavy. You think not? One ton of armor plating and armor plated glass. When I fly the channel, I take a plane to myself. Really? I leave for Latuke tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Touring around Europe? A golfing holiday. Oh, great fun. Always wanted to do it myself. You can afford to, now. Oh, that extra $10,000, you mean? I may need it if I decide to uh, move to Canada. Do you want to make a lot of money? No other point in working. Unfortunately, most ways of making big money take a long time. The laws are strict. <laughs> yes, I found that out. Got on the fringe of the heroin racket. Only just got out without burning my fingers. Of course, this will go no further. I am not concerned with assisting the police. Well, Mr. Bond, be certain that the odds are right and then hazard everything. I'll remember that. Thanks for lunch. Hmm. Perhaps we shall run into each other again someday. I should not be at all surprised. Hmm. Watch the mail for your winnings. And remember, the safest way to double your money is fold it twice and put it in your pocket. Au revoir, Mr. Bond. Morning, 007. Don't blast these wretched scramblers. You're in a bloody telephone box, I suppose. Hold on. Ah, that's better. Go ahead. But be careful. Yes, sir. Lunch with the owner yesterday. Something definitely wrong about the property. And something odd about the car. Its doors are interesting. Owner's going abroad today, flying from Ferryfield. I'm going to get another side of the rolls. Thought I'd make him a present of one of our portable wireless sets. I'll be flying a couple of hours later. How did the game of golf go, 007? I won. We knew that. Pretty big stakes. How did you know, sir? We've had Scotland Yard on. They had a tip that you were in possession of a large amount of undeclared dollars. Chap wasn't very senior and didn't know about Universal. And Money Penny found an envelope containing $10,000 in your mail this morning. Pretty sly of your man, wasn't it? Par for the course, sir. Oh, very funny, 007. Probably made the call directly after the game. Well, the Universal export cover seems to have stuck at any rate. Yes, sir. Oh, this time it goes to the White Cross. Thank you, 007. Watch your step abroad. Call us at once if you need company. Good luck. After Bond had made himself known to the chief passport control at Ferryfield, the officers left him alone in the customs bay. The Silver Ghost stood there out of sight of the plane. The only other car in the bay was a dove grey Triumph TR3 convertible. Bond inserted the Homer, the Ministry's latest transmitting device, into the boot of the rolls behind the tool compartment. As the plane made off across the channel, Bond tuned his receiver. Good. 
So where are you really off to, Goldfinger? The Homer was a simple form of direction finding, which allowed one car to put a long tail on another without any danger of being spotted. Later, after his own flight, Bond would have to discover the road Goldfinger had taken out of Latuque and get well within range. His Aston Martin DB3 would look after that. Right, fast motoring now to catch up. He'll be through Abbeville already, and either on to N1 for Paris or N28 for Rouen. A lot of distance wasted if I make the wrong guess. Which way at the fork? Paris Road. Oh, got it. Now where's he heading? Through Chartres, toward Orléans. <sighs> Sunset nearly. Not bad. 200 plus miles in something over six hours. There were rear lights ahead, dim ones. It was some little sports car. Hmm. Bond closed up. What is it? An MG? Austin Healey? No. A Triumph. Pale grey convertible with a hood up. Interesting. Bond crept cautiously into Orléans. He followed down to the river and along the lighted quays. The Rolls was outside the Arcade Hotel. Bond turned back and made for the Hotel de la Gare. At six o'clock the next morning, the Rolls hadn't moved. Bond watched between the trunks of plane trees. At 8.30, two figures came out of the hotel. The Rolls moved off. Bond followed comfortably along the Loire in the early summer sunshine. Then before Chateau Neuf, there was a shrill scream from twin horns and the little triumph tore past. The hood was down. The blur of a pretty face was hidden by white motoring goggles with dark blue lenses. This would happen today. The Loire dressed just for that, chasing the girl, running it aground, ice cold Vouvre under the vines. And then, no, James. Today is for Goldfinger, not for love. Seen that triumph before at Ferryfield. Now, why are you stopping, Goldfinger? Bloody hell, he's having a picnic. Wait a minute. Is he leaving something under the little bridge? France, Switzerland, Italy. Convenient for all of them. Clear field of view. Hmm. And off they go. Right. Let's find your smush letter box. <coughs> Thank you, Goldfinger. One go bar. Well, well. The pretty little triumph again, only feet away from my tail. Sorry, sweetheart. I'll be as gentle as I can. Hold tight. <coughs> Reversed into me. Touch me there again, you'll have to marry me. You <laughs> bastard. Ouch! Oh. You bloody fool, what are you playing at? Your brakes can't be up to much. I, what the hell do you mean? You reversed into me. Gears slipped. I didn't know you were so close behind. <laughs> I'm frightfully sorry. I'll pay for the repairs. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, it doesn't look as if our bumpers have overridden. Let me try rocking it. <laughs> Leave my car alone! <laughs> There you are, you idiot. You've smashed the fan. Sorry. Still, there's a garage over there. You'll be off again by tomorrow morning. Nice little town, Mackle. Maddening for you, though. I'll certainly take all the blame. <laughs> you know, here's a hundred thousand francs to cover everything. I'd love to stay, but I have an appointment this evening. No. Come on. What do you want? The police? Have me charged with dangerous driving? I've got an appointment, too. I have to get to Geneva. Will you please take me there? It's not far. <laughs> It's a hundred miles. We could do it in two hours in your Aston Martin. Please. All right. Have you got luggage in your boot? I'll fix up with the garage, then we'll be off. No, don't bother. I can manage these. Oh, where are they? Golf clubs? I can do it. What name and address shall I give? I'll be moving about. Hmm? Better say the Hotel Berg in Geneva. The name's Soames. 
Miss Tilly Soames. What's that noise? Oh, that's Magneto wine. Now we're across the Swiss border, it seems to have got worse. It gets louder when I hurry. <laughs> have to get it fixed. I hope I haven't taken you very far out of your way. Oh, not at all. I'm going to Geneva too. <laughs> How long will you be there? I don't know. I'm playing golf. The Swiss Women's Open. Oh, really? What are you doing in Switzerland? Holiday? Uh, business. Important export. Oh. Well, here's your hotel. Well, goodbye. You drive beautifully. I'm surprised you got into the wrong gear at Macon. I'm glad I did. Perhaps we could meet again. Hmm. Perhaps. Goodbye. Now, which way? Towards Lausanne or... left? towards the village of Coppé. Ah, journey's end. Entreprise Auric AG. The fox has gone to earth. Ten minutes later, Bond was through a vineyard, out of the car, and inside the grounds above the rear of the large house. In the middle of a courtyard stood the dusty silver ghost. Suddenly, the back door of the house opened, and Goldfinger came out with four workmen. All right, everybody, take the car to pieces. Good evening. Can I help you? Yes. I'm from Universal Export, hoping to do business with you. Ah, what sort of business? Important agricultural business. Jolly good. I say, it's 007, isn't it? Thought I recognized you. I'm Nigel Kelton. How do you do? What a privilege. Look, better make it quick. There's been a hell of a heat on. They've got me taped. Uh, Redland, if you follow me. Peaceful, of course, but you won't want them sniffing round you. This is only routine. Got something under my shirt for you. Oh, really? Here. Yeah. <clears throat> Good Lord, what's this? Gold? That's right. Get it back to uh, head office, would you? In the bag. And transmit this when you have a chance. Golly, pretty hot stuff. We'll go indeed. Ever heard of the Entreprise Auric at Coppe Village? Auric, of course. They make metal furniture. Pretty good stuff. The Swiss railways take some of it, and the airlines. Hmm? Which airlines? Mecca. Their terminus is here in Geneva. Big charter line to India. So, plating riveted on in Kent, stripped off at Coppe. The sheets will already be in the Coppe furnaces, ready to be modelled into airline seats. In a few days, they'll be stripped off the Mecca constellation in India, replaced with aluminium ones. And Goldfinger would have made, what, a million pounds? The Silver Ghost is golden. He finances a spy network, Smirsh, no doubt, and makes fortunes smuggling gold to India, where he can get the biggest premium. Right. All I need now is the evidence of my own eyes. Just one grain of white gold dust, and then call the duty officer in Regent's Park. The Bank of England freezes Goldfinger's accounts all over the world, his gold hoard trickles back into the bank's vaults, and Smirsh will gnash its blood-stained teeth. What the... What the hell are you doing? Quiet! You're choking me! Get your... Give me that rifle. I'm putting it over there, out of your reach. Give me right... Listen, Tilly, for Christ's sake, stay still. This is me, James Bond. I'm a friend, for God's sake. Now, this is vital. Will you stay still and listen? All right, James Bond. Good. But tell me, were you after Goldfinger? I was going to kill him. Well, I'm after him, too. I've been sent by London. What did he do to you? He killed my sister. You knew her, Jill Masterton. Oh, my God. What happened? He has a woman once a month. He virtually hypnotizes them. Then he paints them gold. Christ. Why? Jill told me. I suppose he sort of thinks he's possessing gold. He gets some Korean servant to paint them. 
He has to leave their backbones unpainted. If their bodies were completely covered, the skin can't breathe. Then they die. Afterwards, they're washed down with resin or something. Goldfinger gives them a thousand dollars and sends them away. So what happened to Jill? She cabled me to come. She was in an emergency ward in Miami. Goldfinger had thrown her out. She told me what he'd done to her. She died the same night. Goldfinger had had her painted all over. He'd murdered her. Revenge for going with you. She said if ever I met you, I was to give you this ring. I wasn't sure I wanted to. There. Yes. I remember it. I'm sorry. More blood on my hands. An arrow? Don't move. Hello, old job. Damn good shot. You? Get up. He mustn't see the rifle. Nice place Mr. Goldfinger has here. Want to have a word with him sometime? Tell him I'll be along tomorrow. Come on, darling. We've had our walk in the woods. Time to get back to the hotel. Don't move. Fall. Now. Oh. You think you'd like to see us now? All right, fine. Come on, darling. Don't try any tricks. Only you haven't interfered. Same to you. Geneva welcomes you, Mr. Bond. Look here, Goldfinger. You put the police onto me over that $10,000. I got on your tracks with my girlfriend here, Miss Soames. We're trespassing, I know, but I wanted to catch up Mr. with you. Mr. Bond, they have a saying in Chicago. Once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, third time it's enemy action. I propose to wring the truth out of you. Our job, the pressure room. You bastard! <laughs> 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 Mr. Bond, oh. welcome back again. You uh. see where you are? In one of my workrooms. If you turn your head just a little, you observe your wrists and ankles bound to the edges of the metal table on which you are, shall we say, lying. Huh? Tilly? Yes, your girlfriend. Strapped to her chair, I'm afraid you are the more comfortable. <laughs> now, look towards your feet. What do you discern? <clears throat> What else, Goldfinger? A circular saw. Mr. Bond, our job has recovered her rifle, also a ring, which I recognize. This girl came here to kill me. Perhaps you did too. Riches may not make you friends, but they greatly increase the class and variety of your enemies. Oh, very neat. Mr. Bond, I am concerned to arrange my actions in appropriate and effective patterns. Our job... Sir! <laughs> Enough of these amiabilities, Mr. Bond. Sing, as my Chicago friends put it, and you will die quickly and painlessly. The girl also. Sing not, and your death will be one long scream. Which is it to be? You're making a stupid mistake, Goldfinger. I told my friends at Universal Export where I was going to be and why. We shall be traced here by the police very easily. Let us go, and nothing more will be heard of the matter. We're two perfectly innocent people. Mr. Bond, I am engaged upon gigantic enterprises. As for the police, I should be delighted to receive them if they come. And those of my Koreans who can speak won't do so, <laughs> nor will the mouths of my electric furnaces, which will have vaporized you both at 2,000 degrees centigrade. <laughs> now, Mr. Bond, make your choice. <sighs> the saw is now approaching your body at about one inch every minute. <sighs> So, Mr. Bond, who are you? Who sent you here? Goldfinger, the girl and I will work for you. We are capable people. You could put us to good use. Good use and get two knives in my back. No, Mr. Bond, I prefer you to die. Then you can go and... Even I'm not capable of that, Mr. Bond. Odd job. <laughs> oh, my God! Now Bond could feel the wind of the saw between his knees. He counted the slowly pounding pulse that utterly possessed his body. If only it would slow down quicker. What was this ridiculous will to live that refused to listen to the brain? Still, he could feel the bursting pressure in his temples. Still, the slow drum of life beat in his ears. A scream tried to force its way through the clamped teeth. Die, Dad. Die. 
Die, damn you, die, damn you, die, damn you, die, damn you, die, die! Who's this? St. Peter? We're coming in to land now. Please fasten your seatbelts and extinguish all cigarettes. Huh. Thank you. Must be a whole lot of us going up together. Oh dear. How will I introduce Tilly to the other girls? Hmm? Probably no more reason why I should run into former girlfriends here than on Earth. Or maybe so much love about these things won't matter. Tricky though. Hi. How you feeling? Huh. Where am I? Let me get up. Oh. Hey, hey, take it easy, oh, mister. You're okay. <sighs> this is Idlewild, New York. You're in the U.S. of A. now. Airport Medical Center. No more troubles. <sighs> Here they are, doctor. This guy's in shock. <sighs> okay. Ah, here are the patients. <sighs> Well, they certainly look in good shape, eh, Doctor? Uh, hmm? Oh, Miss Masterton's still asleep. They are members of my staff. Nervous breakdowns, both of them. And in the same week, would you believe it? But I blame myself for working them both too hard. And now it's my duty to get them back on their feet again. And thank you for all your help with immigration, Doctor. Uh, this is for you. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Goldfinger. I understand you have a private ambulance waiting outside. Doctor! Doctor! There is absolutely nothing wrong with me or this girl. We have been drugged and brought here against our will. I demand to see the Chief of Immigration. I beg you to believe me. Mr. Goldfinger? No, no. You see what I mean, Doctor? Total nervous prostration combined with persecution mania. It may need weeks at the Harkness Clinic, but I'm going to pull him round if it's the last thing I do. Um, hmm. Well, perhaps a shot of interval sodium... I guess you're right, Mr. Goldfinger. It is sad. One of my best assistants. You'll be all right, my dear Jane. <clears throat> Just relax and have a nice sleep. I was afraid the flight might be too much for you. You can leave everything to me. <sighs> Just a small pinprick? Goldfinger, you... 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 Good morning, Mr. Bond. <sighs> what the hell? I hope you prefer being here to being dead. Food will shortly be brought to you. And drink. Bourbon. Chesterfield cigarettes. Don't attempt any dramatics. If you do, I shall shoot you with this. I seldom use these things, but when I have to, I shoot at the right eye. I never miss. Don't worry. I'm not that accurate with a bourbon bottle. Mr. Bond, it was something you said at the last moment that saved your life, that you and Miss Masterton would work for me. And by the way, do you like your suite? No windows? So distracting. Compact, too, don't you think? So, I took the gamble. I sent a cable in your name to Universal Export. You have been offered employment in Canada. You are flying over to explore the prospects, taking Miss Masterton as your secretary. You will write further details. A clumsy cable, but it will serve for the short period I require your services. It won't go, Finger, unless you included one of the phrases that tells M that the cable is authentic. By now, the service will know I am somewhere working under enemy control. You, Mr. Bond, and Miss Masterton have utterly disappeared. We are now somewhere in New York City. A warehouse which I own through nominees and which is equipped as the secret headquarters for my new enterprise. You will both be confined to these quarters. She is in the next room. Here, you will live and work. What work? Mr. Bond, all my life I have been in love with gold. I love its color, its brilliance, its divine heaviness. I love the warm tang it exudes when I melt it down into a true golden syrup. Mm. Above all, Mr. Bond, I love the power that gold alone gives its owner. So what have Miss Masterton and I got to do with this? 
Ready to hand? A few hundred miles from here, Mr. Bond. Opportunity for the greatest crime in history stands waiting. The stage is set, the prize is offered. In one week, the curtain will rise on the single, unique performance, and the world will rock with applause for centuries. So what is it? A robbery, Mr. Bond. There will be many administrative details. I was going to supervise this myself, but now you will do it with Miss Masterton as your secretary. Does she have shorthand and typing? You have already been partly remunerated for this work with your life. When Operation Grand Slam is successfully completed, you will receive one million dollars in gold. Miss Masterton will receive half a million. <laughs> well, now you're talking. What are we going to do? Rob the end of the rainbow? We're going to rob $15 billion worth of gold bullion, half the supply of mined gold in the world. We are going to take Fort Knox. Does the mob mean anything to you? Who is it? Me. You visible? Yes. I suppose you can come in. Well, what's going on? You've got us into this. Get us out. Look, Tilly. There's only one way out of here. An odd job, and I don't know how many other of his henchmen are guarding it. You better know that I'm from, well, let's call it Scotland Yard. We're after this man, Goldfinger. He doesn't care. He thinks no one can find us for at least a week. <laughs> He's probably right. He says he saved our lives because he wants us to work for him. On a crime. Can you do shorthand and typing? Yes. What's the crime? A little matter of robbing Fort Knox. <laughs> He tells me he will have under his command a unit picked from the most powerful gangster groups in the United States. So what happens? We play along. He's quite mad, you know. We're going to be greedy for the money. Apart from saving our lives, it's the only hope we or other I can have of queering his pitch. But how? I haven't the faintest idea. And you expect me to go along with you? There is no point in being a suffragette about this. It's either that or get yourself killed after breakfast. He says you'll get half a million dollars. It's up to you. OK, I could use that. Only don't ever touch me or I'll kill you. The challenge is attractive. <laughs> but don't worry, I won't take it up. There's a meeting in the conference room at 2.30. The conference room was over the end of the warehouse. A wide picture window filled most of the facing wall framing the river. Goldfinger sat with his back to the window at a large round table with a green baize cloth. Eight comfortable armchairs. On the table, five small white parcels sealed with red wax. Music was playing. Miss Masterton, thank you for joining us. I trust you feel better for your rest. And Mr. Bond. <clears throat> Against the wall was a long buffet table gleaming with silver and cut glass. Champagne stood in silver coolers. And Bond noticed two five-pound tins of beluga caviar. On the wall opposite hung a blackboard above a table on which there was a large oblong carton. Welcome to the operations room for Grand Slam. I thought you might appreciate this music. <laughs> Please place copies of the agenda around the conference table, Miss Masterton. Mr. Bond, there is a button push beneath the table. Be so kind as to press it. <sighs> Thank you. Sir? Is everything ready? Yes, sir. No one is to come into this room but the people on your list. Some of them may bring a companion, a consigliere. The companions will remain in the ante room. See that they have everything they wish. You know the signal? Toto. Two rings on the bell. See that the staff carry out their duties to perfection. Sir. Thank you, sir. How many staff have you got? Twenty. Ten Koreans, ten Germans, all hand-picked. And now, Mr. Bond, I should be interested in any reactions you may have to our guests. In their own territories, they are paramount chiefs. They are only here because I have bribed them to come. I need to persuade them. Greed will do the rest. There may be one or more who wish to back out. Who is this pussy galore on the list? Now, she runs a gang from here in New York huh? of women. I need some women for this operation. It's a lesbian organization which calls itself the Cement Mixers. Oh, she is remarkable. Thank you, good Kill the music. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gentlemen, welcome. Come in. My name is Gold. Please be seated. Right. Gentlemen, 
I thank you for the courtesy of your attendance. In the parcels before each of you, you will find one 24-karat gold bar, value $15,000. The agenda also is before you. Perhaps, <coughs> while we wait for Miss Galore, I could run through your names for the information of my assistants, Mr. Bond here and Miss Masterton. Uh, here, Mr. Bond, is Mr. Jed Midnight of the Shadow Syndicate. Yeah. Operating out of Miami and Nevada. Then I believe this elegant gentleman is Mr. Helmut Springer of the Detroit Purple Gang. Charmed, I'm sure. Yeah, don't be taken in by him, Mr. Bond. Door to ghost of Vassa. But it's protection money that pays for her hockey sticks. <laughs> right, thanks. How you doing? I'm Johnny Solo of the Unione Siciliano. Mr. Solo. Okay, I'm Jack Strap, the Spangled Mob. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Strap. <clears throat> and now... All we're waiting for is... Ah! Hi there, boys. Well, well, Southern Bell. I'm not late, am I? How's it going? Hi, pussy. Hi. Yeah, hi, pussy. pussy. How, you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Well, hello, gorgeous. Where they find you? Hello. My name not is... Not you, schmuck. Her. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Galore. Please, please, be seated, Miss Galore. The agenda is in front of you together with your $15,000 gold bar to meet expenses. You don't say. Gold, huh? All the way through? All the way through. Oh, pardon my asking. And now, everybody, I must introduce myself. My name is not Gold. <gasps> Oh. By various operations, most of them illegitimate, I have made a vast sum of money in 20 years, and that sum now stands at $60 million. Oh, $60 nice million. Work. My operations have, for the most part, been confined to Europe, but I have, in the past, acted at many removes on all your behalves. Oh, yes. Well, what do you know? That gentleman and madam is how I came to know of you and invite you here today as the aristocracy of American crime. Well, go ahead, Mr. Gold, or whatever your name isn't. I propose to offer you partnership in an undertaking that will place in each of your treasuries within one week the sum of one billion dollars. Billion dollars? Yes, I use the word billion in the sense of one thousand million. Do I make myself clear? You do. How much your cut, mister? Five billion. <laughs> Listen, fellas, what's a few billion between friends? Don't let's be small-minded, huh? <laughs> Mr. Gold... These are big figures, a total of some $11 billion. The exact figure will be nearer $15 billion. For convenience, I referred only to the amounts I thought it would be possible for us to carry away. Quantities of bullion or currency to that amount are to be found gathered together in only three depositories in the United States. Do you intend that we should knock off one of these? If so, which? Fort Knox in oh. Kentucky. Oh, Foxy Knox. Oh, oh, mister, you're talking Hollywood. Have a serious word with your shrink. Yeah, too bad, guys. That billion sure felt good while they had it. Regrets, mister. None of my set of bent pins could take that kind of piggy bank. I gotta go. And now wait, Miss Galore. Hear me through. Fort Knox is a bank like any other bank. It's a much bigger bank, and its protective devices are stronger and more ingenious, but nothing else. Fort Knox is a myth. Shall I proceed to the plan? Go ahead, Uncle. I kind of like your style. If it's a myth, why don't the Ruskies come and help themselves next time they are playing ice hockey? I crave your indulgence, Mr. Solo. Now, this wall map, thank you, Mr. Bond, is a detailed town map of Fort Knox. It includes the roads and railway tracks leading into the town, and here's the bullion depository, and here runs the line of the railroad from Louisville. We are only concerned... With the station in the center of the town of Fort Knox, this complex of sidings adjoining the Bullion Vault. And this, the second map, please, Mr. Bond. Certainly, sir. This <laughs> is a detailed plan of the Gold Vault itself. It is an immensely solid two story building, a square two layered cake. <laughs> Construction is of granite, steel lined. Now, within the building, there is a steel and concrete vault. The vault door is heavy. Contents of the vault, some $15 billion worth of standard mint bars, 1,005. Any questions? Mm, this is getting exciting. Want to pull on my cigar, pussy? If you put that thing in my face, I swear I will KO you with my gold bread. Oh, oh, yeah. Take it easy, puss. Mister, if you can heist that joint, you got yourself a summer come laude. What I'm about to say will involve all of us in the greatest peacetime conspiracy in the history of the United States. May I take it we're all bound by an oath of absolute secrecy? Sure. Right, of course. 
Mr. Springer? You have my solemn word. Very well. First is the question of disposal. One billion dollars of gold bullion. To transport this amount would require a lot of trucks. For obvious reasons, you will all wish to engage your own drivers. Teamsters, eh, guys? <laughs> Our international brotherhood. You got it, Johnny. Chauffeurs and helpers of America. Mm, reliable man, Goldie. Quite a union, eh, Strap? All those members. Colleagues, oh. I thank you. Now, listen... On D-1, I propose to put the entire population of Fort Knox, military and civilian, temporarily out of action. What? Oh, yes. Exact arrangements have been made and only await my signal. Briefly, two members of my staff are professionally poised to introduce a highly concentrated opiate devised by German chemistry during oh. the last war into the drinking water of the town by means of the filter plants. This substance disseminates rapidly. So what gives? It has this effect, Mr. Solo. Instant narcosis of any person drinking half a tumbler of the infected water. Narcosis? What the hell is narcosis? Instant sleep from which the victim awakens, much refreshed, in approximately three days. Mm. I anticipate that we shall enter a town in which virtually the entire population has fallen into a deep slumber where they stand. Hey, what's that fairy tale? Puss in boots, puss. Hey, this is good, mister. How do we get into the town? A special train. There will be approximately 100 of us, and we shall be attired as Red Cross workers. Miss Galore will, I hope, provide the necessary contingent of nurses. I will copy that. My girls will look sweet and starch. Go on, Goldie. I shall personally bring the train through the town of Fort Knox to the bullion sidings alongside the depository. So you blow the vault door <laughs> and 20 tons fall down, yeah? Exactly, Mr. Solo. Only one weapon is powerful enough. Mr. Bond, the large carton, if you please. This is it, gentlemen. <clears throat> Obtained from a certain military base in Germany, cost me one million dollars. An atomic warhead designed for use with the Corporal Intermediate Range guided missile. Wait, don't oh, touch me with that thing! Nothing can make this object explode until it is armed. It is the latest model, this so called clean atomic bomb. Nevertheless, protection suits will be issued to the squad that first enters the ruins of the building, and they will form the start of the human chain that will remove the gold and pass it to the waiting trucks. And, uh, by the way, I estimate that casualties among the population will approximately equal three days' toll on the roads of Fort Knox. Yeah. Our operation will merely serve to keep statistics at a steady yeah. level. Damn nice of us, I Good say. Job. My yeah. staff here will be assisting me with final details. And now, gentlemen... And, madam, confirm. Which of you wishes to enter this race? Mr. Gold, you are the greatest thing in crime since Cain invented murder and used it on Abel. I am honored to be associated with you. Thank you, Mr. Midnight. Mr. Johnny Solo? For a billion dollars, it's a deal. We're in. Thank you. Yeah, but either we get that billion or you get dead, okay? Acceptable. Mr. Helmet Springer? Pray, consult my colleagues while I deliberate. Hmm. And Mr. Strap? Mm, I figure you know the odds, Goldilocks. Count me in. How about you, puss? Business ain't been so brisk in my corner. I won't say I'm overdrawn at the bank. Uh -huh. I'm just a shade under-deposited. Sure, I'll come in. Me and my girls gotta eat. Mr. Gold. Mr. Springer? After due consideration... I fear your proposal would not find favor with my colleagues in Detroit. It only remains for me to thank you for a most interesting occasion. If you will pardon me. Good afternoon, gentlemen, lady, pussy. Oh, what a pity. Oh. And now, refreshments, everybody. Champagne, oh, caviar. Huh? Thanks. Great. Bond? Yes, sir. Help yourselves, everyone. Music, Miss Masterton, please. All right. That's uh, right. Champagne, Miss Galore? Cheers. Now move over, handsome. Us girls want to talk secrets. Don't we, yummy? Oh, yes, please, Miss Galore. Hey, it's the Bond. Hmm? If that's your doll, you'd better watch her. Pussy gets the girls she wants. She consumes them in bunches, like grapes. I'll watch out. Well, maybe I can help to break it up. <laughs> I could go for that Masterton. <laughs> she sure got natural resources. Here's to you. Hey, Mr. Bond, great caviar. I find your friend Miss Masterton pretty tasty, too, but you? I can't work you out. Where'd you fit in? Oh, I just helped to make Mr. Goldfinger's life a little easier. I thought so. 
Pretty boy. Mr. Goffin. Huh? Mm. Mm. Gentlemen and madam, I've received bad news. Oh. Our friend Mr. Helmut Springer has met with an accident. He oh. fell down the stairs. Oh. Death was instantaneous. Oh, too bad. Oh. And what does this torpedo have to say about it? Alas, his consigliere also fell down the stairs oh. and has succumbed to his injuries. Oh. I sincerely hope these accidents will not be misconstrued in Detroit. Ah, oh, don't give it a thought, Goldie. They love funerals up there. <laughs> Am I right, pussy? Meow. Now they've all gone, Mr. Bond, I will tell you the truth, because you'll have no opportunity of passing it on. By midnight on D-1, the entire population of Fort Knox will not be sleeping. They will be dead or incapacitated. The substance inserted in the water supply will be a highly concentrated form of nerve poison. You're going to kill 60,000 people? You're mad! My not, American motorists do it every two years. Goldfinger, you're a lousy bastard. Don't be childish. We have work to do. You're not going to get a hundred tons of gold out of that place anyway. Where the hell would you hide it? Mr. Bond, it just happens that a Soviet cruiser sails from Norfolk, Virginia on D plus one. Initially by train and then by transport a convoy, my gold will arrive on board the cruiser by midnight on D-Day. I shall sail for Kronstadt, Russia, taking the golden heart of America with me. Back in his room, Bond reflected feverishly. So this is not only a Goldfinger operation with Smirsh in the background. It's Russia versus America with Goldfinger as the spearhead. Is it an act of war? But who will know that Russia has the gold? No one, if the plan goes off as Goldfinger intends. It's modern piracy. How can I stop it? Yes? Four principals and myself will leave LaGuardia Airport tomorrow at 11 a.m. We begin three days of final research right above the chosen area. You will accompany us. Masterton will remain here. It is a chartered plane flown by my own pilots. Bond sat on the edge of his bunk and looked at the wall. Then he got up and went to the typewriter. He worked for an hour, typing exact details of the operation. He folded the sheet, rolled it to a small cylinder about the size of his little finger and sealed it carefully with gum. Next, he typed on a slip of paper. Urgent and vital. Reward of $5,000 guaranteed, no questions asked, to the finder who delivers this message unopened to Felix Leiter, care of Pinkerton's Detective Agency, 154 Nassau Street, New York City. Immediate cash on delivery. Bond rolled this message round the cylinder, wrote $5,000 reward in red ink on the outside, and stuck the little package down the center of three inches of scotch tape. Then he carefully strapped the free ends of the tape down the inside of his thigh. Ouch. On the reconnaissance plane next day, a few minutes before they were due to land back at LaGuardia, Bond was able to get away from odd job long enough to visit the washroom, remove the taped SOS, and tape it to the underside of the lavatory seat. There. $5,000 reward. Surely not even a hasty cleaner will miss this. Who'll be the finder? Two days to go. How soon? Hey, hey you! Come out! All right, all right, I'm coming. You dumb thug. So, ideally, the SOS gets to Felix Leiter. He tells his chief a quick flight down to Washington, the FBI, the army, president. Then what? A master plan on the day and the whole gang into the bag? Or will this plane still be standing somewhere, unserviced? Yes? It is time, Mr. Bond. The first phase of Operation Grand Slam is successful. We board the train here in New York as planned at midnight. Penn Station. You will be with me in a white surgeon's coat. Our mobsters and their teams will wear white coats also, and our bands of a medical field force. Miss Masterton will join Miss Galore's team as a Red Cross nurse. Dr. Gold, I'm the station superintendent. I'm afraid the news isn't too good. All trains held at Louisville. No reply from the train depot at Fort Knox. But we'll get you through all right. We are grateful to you. Doctor, what's going on down there? Is it food poisoning? My friend, that's what we've got to find out. If you want me to make a guess, it's a form of sleeping sickness. 
Trypanosomiasis, we call it. That's so. Well, best of luck, Doc. And now if you get your men and nurses on board, I'll have this train on its way. Thank you, Superintendent. I will not forget your services. Oh my, well, there's a pretty sight. Tickets, please. Hi, Miss Galore. You make a fabulous nurse. Oh, really? Well, hello, Mr. Bond. Long time no see, handsome. Uncle doesn't let you off the lead much. Hello, beautiful. I'm feeling rather faint. How about doing a bit of nursing? You know what, Bondy? I got a feeling there's something phony about you. I got instinct, see? Just what are you and that doll doing in this outfit? I told you. We do all the work. Uh-huh. Maybe you do. But for my money, if any little thing goes wrong with this caper, it'll be handsome. Who knows why? Got me? And now, I got a Chiefs of Staff meeting. Serious medical conclave, know what I mean? just spoken to the station superintendent here in Louisville. I'm afraid the situation in Fort Knox is as bad as we feared. I will now go forward to the leading diesel with my assistance, and we will proceed slowly into the infected area. Medical teams, be prepared to put on your masks. All railway personnel will leave the train here. That's it. God has taken over the dead man's head. On your toes, medical mob. <laughs> Stay calm. Ten minutes to go. Remember your duties. Ten minutes to go, folks. Ten minutes to go. Hey, you. I'm going to the lavatory. No. No allow. Look, if you don't let me, I'm gonna start a fight. Goldfinger won't like that. <sighs> okay. But no lock the door. Once inside, Bond took off his right shoe, slid out the knife he had secreted beneath the sole, and slipped it down inside the waistband of his trousers. He had another knife hidden in the left shoe. He washed himself, then went out and back to his seat. Nearly there. Town of Fort Knox, near Station Road. Modern bungalows. Air's clear as crystal. No breakfasts cooking. Oh, James. A body on its face in the middle of the lawn. Death. Dead people everywhere. Oh boy. You see him all sprout out? Oh god, he certainly slipped them the Mickey Finn. That is an incredible narcosis there. Too bad some of them are out for a ride when they get ahead, huh? Huh. That's right, Mr. Seven. Yeah, but you know what they say about omelets. Hey, stand by you guys. Stand by. Are you sure they're only asleep? I thought I saw some sort of froth on some of the lips. I know, pink. Americans always chewing something. Listen, Tilly, they may be shooting. You understand? Mm -hmm. We're just coming into the platform of the bullion depository siding. We're in the command group with Goldfinger and our gangster pals. Oh, did I tell you? I have to get close to Goldfinger and cut his throat. James. We'll be on the flat roofs of the two diesel locomotives. I'm going to get near Miss Galore. She'll look after me. All right, doors open. Go for it. Go, 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 go. In position on the roof of the first diesel, Bond edged as close as he could to Goldfinger. But our job stood between them. His eyes never flickered from Bond and the girl. They're through the first gates. Bond took a quick look at the battlefield. In the center stood the huge, squat mausoleum, the sun glinting off the polished granite of its walls. Outside the big open field in which it stood, the roads were already lined with the gang's trucks and transporters. Through the main gate poured the tidy, disciplined squads from the train. Outside this world of movement, there was absolute stillness and silence. The bodies of the guards lay sprawling where they had fallen, the sentries by their pillboxes still clutching their automatic pistols. Inside the protecting wall, two ragged squads of soldiers in battle dress lay in vague, untidy heaps. Desperately, Bond looked for a sign of life, a sign of movement, a hint that all this was a careful ambush. Shit. Nothing. All right. Bomb squad, ready. Prepare to take cover. 
They're a minute ahead of time, Goldfinger. You see, Mr. Bond, you were wrong, and I was right. Ten more minutes and I shall be the richest man in history. What do you say to that? I'll tell you in ten minutes' time. Will really? you? Maybe. Prepare to take cover, gentlemen. And then we will say goodbye, Mr. Bond. What's that? A maroon signal. Thank you, Felix. Stand where you are. This is the United States Army. Lay down your arms. I repeat, lay down your arms. Bond's heart leapt. A quick glance showed him the ranks of dead soldiers springing to life, the machine guns on the locked armored cars swinging to cover the gates. Then all hell broke loose. Stay where you are. Lay down your arms and don't move. Lay down your arms. Quick, Tilly. Come on, jump down on the platform now. Now run. Keep close to the train for cover. Run. Watch out! Get after them! Stop! Keep going! Keep going! No! No! Stop! No. I want to stay close to Pussy! I'll be safe with her! Shut up, you little fool! Run like hell! I can't! You start now! Bond grabbed the knife from his belt and swirled to meet our job. Ten yards away, our job hardly paused. One hand whipped off his ridiculous deadly hat. A glance to take aim and the black steel half-moon sang through the air. Now you! No, you don't, you bastard! There! Oh, damn! Oh, no. Karate time. This is it! No, you! Now! But the karate death blow never came, and Bond's dazed eyes took in the figure of Oddjob racing away from him back down the platform. Go! Finger. Mr. The train was moving. Our job got to the leading diesel and leapt for the footplate. For a moment he hung, his legs scrabbling for a foothold. Then he had disappeared into the cabin and the huge streamlined engine gathered speed. James Bond Geronimo! <laughs> you see, we got your Billy do. James! Ah, oh, Felix Leiter. You guys took your time. Hey, don't shoot my fox, you bastard. Give me that bazooka. What? Hey, stand clear. <laughs> Not bad for a rookie. May put the one diesel out, but those babies are twins, and he can make it out on the other engine. Are you bungling, Oaf? Why in hell didn't you block that line? Listen, Seamus. Any complaints about the stage management, you can tell them to the president. He took personal command of this operation, and it's a honey. What do you think of all our sleeping beauty springing back to life? Oh, nice touch with the pink froth. Fooled us all. <laughs> There's a spot of plane overhead. We'll have all Goldilocks behind bars by midday. I should hope so. How were we to know he was going to stay aboard the train? Hell, James. Are we glad to see you. Bless you, Felix. You've always been good at saving my life. Darn nearly too late this time. I'm afraid Tilly Masterson's had it. Here she is. Broken doll. Poor little bitch. She didn't think much of men. Take it easy, kid. Hey, what the hell's that? It's the ceasefire. We've won! We've won, James. Come on, pal. Come on. I'm telling you, James, we still haven't a clue. Goldfinger didn't get to the Russian cruiser. For my money, the mob has somehow got them out to Cuba. There's no help that the president is hopping mad. Embarrassing, because he was nice to me yesterday in Washington. Not a bad lunch. I don't like ragged ends, and I failed in both tasks given to me by London. Get Goldfinger and get Goldfinger's bullion. The BOAC Monarch Flight Number 510 to Gander in London is now boarding at gate number five. Well, see you next time. That's my flight. Thanks for everything, Felix. Sure thing, kid. Tell that old bastard M to send you back over soon. Like to have you meet my oil well. Bye, James. Can I see your health certificate, please, Mr. Bond? Certainly. What's going on? I'm very sorry, sir. A typhoid case at Gander. They're insisting all transit passengers who haven't had their shots in the last six months should be topped up. Didn't know Gander was so touchy about these it things. It won't take a minute. If you'll come through here, sir. One more, doctor. Thanks. Last one. That's it. 
Have a good flight, Mr. Bond. Check it off and left sleeve up, please. Too bad they're so sensitive up a gander. What are they afraid of? Spreading the black death? There we are. Oh. You're on your way. Well, Mr. Bond, I hope you enjoyed your sleep. Fate wished us to play the game out, but this time there cannot possibly be a card on your sleeve. We are on our way to Canada, and then... Why I kept you alive, why I didn't crush you like a beetle. You and the girl were useful to me. Yes, I was right about that. But I was mad to have taken the chance. And now, tell me, Mr. Bond, how did you do it? How did you communicate? I'll tell you when you've taken off these straps and brought me a bottle of bourbon, ice, soda, water, and a packet of Chesterfields. I have no objection. I'll job see to it. Then you get into the seat in front of him, I'll job. There is no harm Mr. Bond can do, but he is not to approach the cockpit door. Understood? Understood. Well, hi, handsome. Hello, pussy. Cigarettes, ice, bourbon. Hmm. Let me adjust your seatbelt. I'm with you. There, that's it. He's all yours, Goldfinger. Very well, Mr. Bond. You first, Goldfinger. What's going on? I took three trucks and drove across country with my personal horde of gold bullion. I required no one except Miss Galore. I paid off the drivers, shot three mobsters, hired a plane. The crates of gold being passed off as lead for X-ray plates. In New York, I talked with Moscow by radio. My friends there, whom I believe you know, pass under the generic name of Smersh. Smersh said they would greatly like to interview you. In due course, I conceived this plan. Simple, when you are rich. You were carried out on a stretcher, and in due course, my own crew took to the air. Now, Mr. Bond of the British Secret Service, who put you on to me? Bond gave Goldfinger a censored version of the truth. The lights had been turned out. Bond sat quietly in the darkness and sweated with fear at what he was going to do. The second knife was now under his coat. His eyes never left the dim profile reflected in the perspex oblong of the window of the seat in front. Our job's head turned away from the piercing eye of light in the wall and rested on its left cheek away from the window. Slowly, inch by inch, Bond crouched forward and reached with his knife hand between the wall and Odd Job's seat. Now the needle sharp tip of the dagger was aimed at the center of the square inch of perspex he had chosen. Bond grasped the end of his seatbelt tightly, drew the knife back two inches, and lunge. As he whipped back his dagger, Bond was sucked violently against the back of Odd Job's seat with a force that tore the end of the seatbelt from his hand. Our job's body seemed to elongate towards the howling black aperture. His head went through, and his shoulders hit the frame. Then the Korean's body was slowly, foot by foot, sucked through the aperture. And out. Like toothpaste. Into space. <laughs> Goldfinger, just you. You could have had them live and go. Pilot, Goldfinger's dead. Oh my God. If anyone moves or disobeys an order, I shall kill them too. What's your position, height, and speed? So we're about 500 miles east of Goose Bay. Our ground speed is 250 miles per hour. Our height, 2,000 feet. How much flying can you do at this altitude? We must be using our fuel pretty fast. Oh, yes, sir. I estimate we have less than an hour left. Where's weather ship, Charlie? About 300 miles to the northeast, sir. Right. All the calls for weather ship, Charlie. Call them up now. We'll ditch as close to them as possible. Yes, sir. Ocean Station Charlie, this is Speedbird 510, Golf Alpha Lima Golf Yankee, calling C for Charlie. Oh, and tell them I want whiskey for one and irons for five waiting. Huh? And a cup of tea. I got a pretty girl on board. James, you might make it two whiskeys. Tea makes me hiccup. Pussy, get back in your basket. Huh? This is more like it. Cheers.
To you, James. Will you write to me and sing, sing? <laughs> they told me you only like women. Well, I never met a man before. I come from the South. You know the definition of a virgin down there? It's a girl who can run faster than a brother. <laughs> In my case, I couldn't run as fast as my uncle. I was 12, and that ain't so good, James. You ought to be able to guess that. All you need is a course of TLC. TLC? Tender loving care treatment. That's what they write on the paperwork when a waif gets... gets rescued. I'd like that, James. Very much. When's it gonna start? In Goldfinger by Ian Fleming, Ian McKellen played Goldfinger and Toby Stevens, James Bond. Rosamund Pike played Pussy Galore, Lisa Dillon was Tilly Masterton, and Anna Louise Plowman, Jill Masterton. M was played by John Standing, Colonel Smithers, Ian Ogilvy, DuPont, Henry Goodman, Hawker, Alistair McGowan, and Odd Job, John David Yu. The Mobsters, Jed Midnight, Nigel Anthony, Helmut Springer, Hector Elizondo, Mr. Strap, Tom Hollander, and Johnny Solo, Tim Pickett-Smith. Alfred and the airline captain, Alan Shearman. Nigel Kelton and the station superintendent, Matthew Wolfe. The nurse, Tracy Patton. The doctors and the pilot, Kyle Sola. And Felix Leiter, Lloyd Owen. Martin Jarvis was the voice of Ian Fleming, and other parts were played by members of the cast. The music was specially composed by Mark Holden and Sam Barber. Goldfinger was dramatized by Archie Scottney, directed by Martin Jarvis, and is a Jarvis and Ayres production for BBC Radio 4.